Welcome to our first evening of Lifelink Ministry for the summer of 2023. I'm glad you've joined us tonight for the study entitled The Way of Wisdom. And I'd encourage you to join me in Proverbs chapter 1 uh, for the study here this evening. I want you to just think, though, as you're turning to Proverbs 1 about the, the title. The title is worded in a very specific way. It's The Way of Wisdom. Uh, we live in a very inclusive world where, in one sense, the world would say there are many ways, or this is just a way, and then there's other ways of wisdom. Uh, this study is very uh, exclusive. We live in an inclusive world, very open-minded, and anything goes, and every man does what is right in his own eyes, if you will. And, and uh, matter of fact, Proverbs two times uh, will say this. There's this. This proverb is repeated uh, in, in the book. Uh, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14, 12, and 16, 25. It's interesting because the context for the book of Proverbs um, is similar to even what's going on today in our world. Uh, there, there were many different ways that people thought they were living in a wise manner. But the scriptures are going to call these ways foolishness. For example, the nations around Israel, they worshipped other gods, they served other gods, but they thought... They were walking wisely. They thought they were doing what was right. Even within the nation, the nation of Israel itself, there were people that uh, were living, not according to the fear of the Lord and following the Lord, but they were doing their own ways, serving idols or whatever it might be, living without God in the world. And the scriptures are going to call that foolishness. You see, there is the way of wisdom. Proverbs 1 and verse 7, uh, which is the thesis statement for the book and the, uh, the, the main idea, and, and it's just going to come across here right in the beginning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And there's a sense in which knowledge and wisdom are used a little interchangeably there. There's a distinction in the exact usage, but, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It's the starting point of knowledge. And the fools are going to despise that. They're going to despise the Lord. They're going to live life without the Lord. If, if, if you think you're walking wisely and the Lord is not in the equation, it's foolishness. But it's not just having the Lord in the equation. Notice what it says. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, the way of wisdom requires one to revere, honor the Lord in such a way that it leads to trusting and obeying Him in all areas of life. If you will, the, the book of Proverbs is a gracious invitation from God to the people of Israel to to walk in the way of wisdom, which is so good, so such a blessing. The book calls Israel to a right relationship with the Lord and a right response to the Lord so that they live in a right manner before the Lord. And tonight, what we want to do, and I'm going to have you read this in, in just a moment, we're going to look at the fivefold purposes of the book of Proverbs how Proverbs itself says this is why uh, this book is being written. And these, these purpose statements, um, we're going to see them, um, are all going to lead up to this thesis statement. They're going to drive us to the thesis statement. But let me just pause for a moment, give you an opportunity to read as a group the first seven verses of Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7, you, you folks read it and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Did you see the five purpose statements for the book? They all begin with the word to, to know wisdom, to perceive, to receive, to give, and to understand. Uh, what we're going to do with those five statements is we're going to uh, summarize them in three categories. 
And I think it'll make sense to you as you go throughout. And uh, it'll give us an overview, but it'll drive us to the purpose statement or the thesis statement of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So first, let me just show you in verses 2 and 3, there's actually three purposes, but they all point us to the value of the book of Proverbs. You see, Proverbs, this way of wisdom, is going to give us benefits and blessings. It's going to be good. And benefits and blessings await those who fear the Lord. And you see those in the words to know in verse 2, to perceive in verse 2, and to receive. There's benefits and blessings. There's things we're going to know. There's things we're going to perceive. There's things that we're going to uh, be, um, to receive as well. And let's look at those. Uh, first off, you'll see uh, to know wisdom and instruction. It's interesting because in the thesis statement, in verse 7, you'll see fools despise wisdom and instruction. But Proverbs is inviting us to know it. Not to despise it, but to know it. True wisdom and true instruction is rooted in the Lord. The fear of the Lord is going to be the beginning of this knowledge to know what we need to know. A curriculum that is not rooted in the Lord is really despising the Lord. A society that makes laws that do not flow from the word of the Lord will not be a wise society. It might say it's wise. It might uh, say it is, uh, um, has instruction, but it's false. It's not a true wisdom. It's interesting, this last month, is in the month of June, which when I was preparing this uh, message, um, I've I've seen sports teams, local sports teams, uh, businesses, government agencies, hospitals, educational institutions all express their ignorance by promoting a worldly curriculum uh, that is a curriculum that does not begin with the Lord. And therefore, in their pride, they despise wisdom and instruction. You see, generally in our society, the discussions are, what do you think? What do you think? I think this. I'm going to promote this. But here's really, if if that's all we do, then we've really even lost the argument. We're already off the way of wisdom because the way of wisdom begins with the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's all about what the Lord thinks. To despise in verse 7 gives the idea of, of holding it insignificant. God is treated so insignificantly in our society. And and therefore, uh, when you give no significance to the Lord, to God, uh, everything that's going to come is foolishness because the the beginning of the starting point of wisdom is with the Lord and a right relationship and a right response to Him. Uh, We read about this in the New Testament as, as well because we live in a world where people claim to know And that's the purpose again, to know. There's benefits and blessings to knowing. But what do they really know? See, the benefits and blessing of Proverbs is to know wisdom, true wisdom and true instruction. Uh, We see in the New Testament, book of Timothy specifically, they're ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of of the truth. It's falsely called knowledge in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 7 because it is without the Lord or his word or the fear of him. Here's just a little thing that I'd like you to do. Um, the, the fool in Proverbs thinks he knows. The way there's that way of that seems right to him. But Proverbs presents the fool as one who truly does not know. And we got four verses for you to look up as a, a group. The first three clearly are to that. And the last one uh, speaks about uh, a little different emphasis, but we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. But look at the first three specifically and, and read them and just see what, how the fool is presented in Proverbs as not knowing. I'll be back with you in a moment. Well, we'll pick it up with this Proverbs 30 and verse 4. 
Um, which, which takes us right back to the thesis statement. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And, and we've seen how the fool does not know. He doesn't know what makes him stumble. He doesn't know that his way is leading to death. And he thinks he's on the way of wisdom or a way of wisdom. But it's really foolish. He doesn't know wisdom. He doesn't know the way of wisdom because he doesn't know the Lord. And that is the rhetorical question in Verse 4, uh, because who has gathered the wind in his fist? It's, it's the Lord. Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If you know. And that's what this book is driving us to, to know the Lord so that we can know true wisdom because he is. That's going to be one of the benefits because this world was created by God. He, he, he wrote the instruction manual for it. And so if you want to know wisdom and instruction... It begins with that proper relationship with with the Lord. If God is not honored and his word not followed, then wisdom, as the Hebrew sages defined it, can never be attained. Well, Proverbs is written so that we will know wisdom and instruction. But another benefit is uh, back in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 2, the last part, it says to perceive the words of, of understanding. There's a little play on words going on in this part, but it, it gives us another benefit of Proverbs. The, the word perceive comes from a verb which distinguishes, which means to distinguish. It, it's based on a, a preposition which actually means between, and we get the word divide, and there's this side and there's this side, and you can distinguish between. You see, there's going to be right and there's going to be wrong. There's righteousness and wickedness. There's wisdom and foolishness. There's good and there's evil. And this person, to perceive, is going to be distinguished between the words of understanding, which again has a form of that between, distinguishing between. There's words which distinguish between the two. And so you're going to be able to understand the words of understanding. And it's interesting because Hebrews, the Hebrew idea of wisdom, it doesn't just mean we know something. It's not just intellectual so we can pass a test, but it's going to affect all of life. And you're going to see this in, in, the, in Proverbs. If you were to read all the way through chapter 31, you're going to see there's a right and a wrong way. You're going to distinguish between the two in so many practical areas of life so that you're living you're not only distinguishing, but you're, you're following the right path. You're following the good path. You're following the way of righteousness and wisdom. And you'll see that in areas like finances. You'll see it in areas like speech, our words. You'll see it in relationships, how we interact with each other. You'll see it in work ethic. You'll see it in, in things of what we consume, foods and alcohol, etc., or don't consume, I should say. Moral purity as well. Just a host of practical areas where this gets fleshed out. There's a way of wisdom. We need to understand that. The world doesn't. It makes no distinguish in between them. They just, wow, whatever comes, comes. And we're, the, the, the benefit, the blessing of the way of wisdom in this book of Proverbs is we're going to distinguish between and we're going to understand the, 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 the sayings of, or the words of the understanding. And then You'll see the third purpose that leads to this blessing and benefit is in verse 3, to receive. Oh, there's some good things for us to welcome and to receive in our lives. You see, um, wisdom is going to cry out throughout this book. You, you even see the phrase, get wisdom, get understanding. And all you're getting, it's the principal thing, get this wisdom. And again, it's not just to fill our heads, but it's meant to change our life. Wisdom is knowledge applied. And so you're going to receive the instruction, the teaching of wisdom, this knowledge applied. And let me just see what you receive here. And we'll just briefly give you a little definition for these. But just think of the blessing or the benefit with these. Uh, to receive the instruction first of wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge applied. When you receive it, you will be applying God's way of wisdom in your words, thoughts, and deeds in all areas of 
your life. It's not just to know it, it's to live it. How good it will be to live in the way of wisdom, that instruction. Uh, it's not only to receive the instruction of wisdom, but to receive the instruction of justice. Justice is what is morally right. You see, there's a right and there's a wrong. The world doesn't establish right and wrong. God does. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of this. And so that is justice, judgment. This is interesting because it's literally the verdicts. Uh, The verdicts, sometimes they're favorable and sometimes they're unfavorable. There's things we are to do that are favorable and there's things we're not to do. Who's the one that ultimately gives us, who gives the judgment or the verdict? Who determines what's right and wrong? Who's the, who is wisdom? It's, it's the Lord. And so we receive that. We're going to know what we should be doing, what we should not be doing. And then equity. Equity. It's a word which uh, sometimes gets twisted today with things even like equality or whatever that might uh, mean and a lot of... Um, training that's out there that's really perverted. This this word for equity literally means an evenness or a straightness. And what you're going to see is there's a straight way. Uh, There's there's the straight way or the the smooth way that's even. And then there is the, the crooked or the perverted way. What a blessing and a benefit to know God's straight way, what is equitable what is even, what is straight. That's what Proverbs is going to give to us. And so there's benefits and blessings that await those who fear the Lord. And and that's going to be one of the purposes. What an encouragement this book and this study will be to change our lives, to encourage us in in living for the Lord. The second um, category of the purpose statements, and you can see this in in verse 4 and verse 5, there's a little bit of a shift. Yes, there's still these blessings, but there's a shift. And, and in, in these two verses, you're going to see the audience of the book of Proverbs. Who is this for? It's, it's purpose. It, it kind of broadens this, these blessings and these benefits. Okay, well, who, who really should be reading? Who should be studying um, this, this book? Uh, take a moment. Just see if you can identify the four groups of people that are in verses 4 and 5 that Proverbs is written to. I'll be back in just a moment. Well, you probably picked them out pretty easily. In verse 4, it's the simple. In verse 4, it's also the young man. In verse 5, it's the wise man. And then there is the man of understanding. The first two kind of go together and the 2 and verse 5 also go together, and they're painting kind of extremes, if you will. Like this side over here, it's the simple. Well, who's the, who's the simple? That's the naive. It's those that are easily swayed. One definition of the simple is very interesting because it, it basically is a definition of what our society promotes today. It's open-minded. And so they're easily swayed. They're easily turned one direction or another. And, and here's... Here's what they will gain, because you don't want to be open-minded. The Bible doesn't teach us to be open-minded. It's very uh, exclusive. The fear of the Lord is the starting point. Not other fears, not other people, not man. It's the fear of the Lord. And and so if the simple, when they understand Proverbs, it's going to give them prudence. And prudence gives the idea of someone who will not be easily swayed or tricked or deceived. You see, the foolishness of this world, Satan himself and his rebellion against God, he he tempts, but it's a trickery, it's a deception. It looks good, it appears good even sometimes, but it's false. And so this book is is a blessing for those who are simple, that you don't know yet. It's kind of similar to James. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. And Proverbs is a book that just gives us wisdom from God. So we can have prudence. The other one is the young man uh, in verse 4. It's a word that is used of, uh, of a boy um, from infancy to adolescence. You're going to see throughout this book, oftentimes, my son or my sons. 
this is going to be a great textbook for children. I would encourage fathers and even mothers, you know, take this book and at least once a year, read it to your children. If you have children in the home, read it to them. If you have grandchildren, see that they're hearing the book of Proverbs at least, at least once a year. The young man, he'll be given knowledge and discretion. This is the same word that is used in Proverbs 1.7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This word is used 44 times in the book of Proverbs. It's this knowledge that's applied. It's, it's going to teach them how to live. And boy, what, a, what does a young person need to, to learn? And, and Solomon's son, who's the author of this book, he, he's writing even to help them in kings, as kings, and they'll know right judgment, what's a straight way, etc. And so he's, he's raising up his children um, and giving them wisdom by teaching them the Proverbs. And discretion is an interesting word as well. The young man, it's the power to mentally think and then to come to or devise a right decision. We need to be thinking. I mean, we're so easily deserved. We're not thinking our thoughts. We, we need the wisdom of God, the way of wisdom to think that and to discern God's thoughts as we live in this world, to understand the times and know how we ought to live like the men of Issachar did. In Israel. Well, it's not just for those that are simple and, and young, um, but it's also then for those that have already gained a level of wisdom. Verse 5 speaks about a wise man, and then also a man of understanding. As a father, as I've read Proverbs to my children many a times, every time I go through it, I'm encouraged. There's more for me to learn. We haven't arrived. And uh, because God is so great, he's so infinitely wise. And so even someone who was wise or is, or is, degree, or is, or is um, advanced, if you will, to some level of wisdom in his walk with the Lord, even a wise man will hear. He'll keep listening to this. So important for us to hear and to increase learning. We'll grow. And a man of understanding, someone again who has been able to distinguish um, he will also attain wise counsel. There is counsel, and then there is wise counsel. If you're looking for wise counsel, the book of Proverbs is a great spot. So many of our situations could be solved just from there. And, and for those of us who have understanding, we'd say, oh, let's turn to the Word of God. Let's see how we should live so that we can walk rightly in our direction and our counsel. And so the audience of the book of Proverbs, really, it's, it's all of us. Simple, young, wise, and men of understanding. And here's why. All of us can grow in fearing the Lord. There's, these benefits and blessings await all of us. For those of us that will hear and continue learning uh, who our God is and what He desires from us. And then finally, verse 6 gives the last purpose statement for the book, and and really the focus here in this, this purpose statement is, is the literature of the book of Proverbs. You even see that in, in verse 6, to understand. Again, that's the idea to distinguish between. But it's going to understand what? Well, it lists four things. A proverb, an enigma, the words of the wise, and the riddles. This is really what Proverbs is. Proverbs, it's, it's a lot of little Proverbs. What, what is a proverb? Well, it's an ethical maxim. It's, it's sentences. Uh, the Proverbs are sentences of ethical wisdom presented in a poetic way. An enigma, what's that? It's an obscure saying. It needs interpretation. Some translations even interpret the, or, uh, translate it interpretation. Uh, but it's, it's something that you've got to really ponder. You've got to think about. It's, it's an obscure thing, and it causes you to wait. Just stop and ponder um, how they're poetically ris, uh, listed and oftentimes in contrasting ways. And, and there's plenty of examples. Just read any of the Proverbs, and you'll see, oh, this is catching my attention, causing me to stop and think about what is this saying really meaning? What's the interpretation of it? Uh, then you have the words of the wise. Um, Proverbs is wisdom 
literature and the riddles. But the word riddles there gives the idea of perplexing sayings, hard sayings. And so Proverbs is written so we'd understand them. It's not to confuse us. It's not to leave us in the, in the dark. But it's this type of literature that is going to lead to helping us distinguish between and understand and capture the, the ethical impact and the moral teaching behind these various Proverbs. But it's going to involve thinking. It's going to involve work. And I would say it this way, because this this happens, and and I've seen this even in the book in my own life. You ponder one of those Proverbs, and then the light goes on, and you're like, whoa, that's really good. And and what it does there is it causes us to think mentally. It causes us to, to, to apply our heart to wisdom. It, it, it takes work. It takes effort to, to think and to love God with our mind, to fear Him in our mind. Okay, this is what He's saying. And, and, and there's, there's, this, there's this process of trying to understand. But just like in work, work produces something. There's fruit that comes, and the fruit of the labor is so sweet. As we understand the sayings of the Proverbs, like, whoa, that's beautiful. That's powerful. That's good. Uh, here's a couple of what a couple of uh, commentators said even about this verse. The purpose in using a proverb was to help the young acquire mental skills that promote wise living. They need to be able to think. They need to be able to understand, to distinguish between. It's both the content and the structure of the sayings contributed to the hearer's development. In other words, the process of getting to the uh, moral teaching is, is just as important as the moral teaching. Uh, to develop a thinking, to love God with our mind. The process was a challenge in the product of reward. Another author says this, While understanding is a gift of God, it does not come automatically. The possession of it requires a persistent diligence. If you want to understand Proverbs, you've got to work, you've got to think. It is more than IQ. It connotes character. One is at fault if he doesn't have it. And in fact, not to pursue it will incur God's punishment. When one acts on the objective presentations of God's revelation, he will attain the ideal of of the significance of understanding. Let me conclude tonight over in Proverbs 2 because it really summarizes verse 6. And just the urgency for us In this, Uh, my son, Proverbs 2, verse 1, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, that takes work, treasuring them. But here, notice what he says in verse 2. You got to incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. In other words, this just doesn't come. There's there's a process, there's a a thinking of discernment, of understanding, applying your heart to understanding. You lift up, there's this desire to long for it. You lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek for her as silver in these riddles and these proverbs and these maximums that are presented, and search for her as for hidden treasure, here you get it, then you will what? Understand the fear of the Lord. And that takes us back to verse 7 and 6 as well, to understand. And ultimately, these Proverbs are going to cause us to think about God's principles for this world that are presented in a poetic way. It causes us to contemplate, to consider, so that we understand, wow, here's what God desires, and it's good, and it's a blessing. Well, there's a couple of questions for you folks to consider tonight on your uh, discussion time together, and uh, may God encourage us as we embark on this study, The Way of Wisdom. We'll pick it up, Lord willing, next week uh, with the rest of Proverbs chapter 1. Have a great night tonight in Lifeline.